Hello there, everybody. It's about Night 2 aka Nightmare, and welcome back to Higurashi Kai Matsuri Bayashi. I'm happy that I actually got that right. Okay, so we've managed to get almost all of the pieces, and it looks like we only have these last two pages that we got to deal with. So we got this. I don't think we can access this yet. I gotta double check. Never mind! With this, do I have all the pieces lined up for the 50th year of the Showa era? It sure is a hard and exhausting job just to line up the pieces for the month of the June of the 50th year of the Showa era. But finally, I'm at the start line. I'm at zero. Seeing all the colorful pieces, Obviously, so many thoughts were gathered just in that month. I used to think that thoughts of people who aren't related to me were useless. But I was wrong. Furude Rika did her best to overcome the fate of June of the 50th year of the Showa era. She did two things. One was to get in touch with the Eerie Institution, because she knew she would be protected there. Ironically, Takano from the Eerie Institution was the one who tried to kill me but it was the best move for her at the time. And the other was to have the Mayabara family move to Hinamizawa. Actually, it was not certain that the Mayabara family would move to Hinamizawa. That was just blind luck, and it worked out absolutely fantastically. On the day of the tour for the lot sale, the father decided to move in after running into us. Therefore, it was necessary for us to play in that field. It was the key for the Mayabara family's move. It took me so long to find that out, though. After turning various conditions on and off repeatedly, I finally realized that meeting Keiji's father at that field was the key. Mayabara Keiji is a very important key that would break Rule Z, one of the important chains that was binding me. He is the new and fresh wind that is powerful enough to break all the old and evil customs in this village. Yeah! He created many chances. He also provided me with an important clue by letting me know that a strong will, and the will to believe, is what's important in standing up against a powerful fate. But I wasn't the only one who wished for him. People of the Sonozaki family who wanted to wipe out the immoral habits of the village also wished for him. Sonozaki Mion vowed to herself to protect Sotoko and Satoshi because she was very much bothered by the irrational exile of the Hojo family. And on the night Hojo Satoshi disappeared, she exploded on Sonozaki Oryu and voiced her strong thoughts. Sonozaki Oryu understood. Oryu herself has come to understand about the evil custom of the village and has been wanting to do something about it. But she knew she didn't have the power to do anything about it. So she entrusted it to the new wind that was coming from the outside. That was why the lots went on sale, so the Mayabara family could move in. Even if I danced in the field, if Oryu hadn't put the lots on sale, Keiji couldn't have come. And Ryugu Rana, who provided many important chances for Mayabara Keiji, was saved by coming back to Hinamizawa. Although, she was hurt deeply by their parents' divorce, which led to her terminal condition. Mayabara Keiji's wish to reset and start over his life is the same wish Ryugu Rena had a year ago. Maybe that's why Rena was able to understand Keiji. It's like using one piece of memories to recognize events of another piece. If a lesson learned in one piece is used in another piece, then humans won't make mistakes. The game pieces will show their best moves, and the chance of winning this game of June of the 58th Shira of Showa Era will increase rapidly. I started slurring my words there. In other words, Ryugu Rena makes extremely important moves unintentionally. The powerful rule Z that surrounded the Hojo siblings was eventually smashed by their great actions. Of course, Sotko overcoming herself mentally was also a big help. The hands met only because they reached from both sides. Keiichi and Rena are the ones who taught me that. Mion is the one who made it possible for them to move here, and she also helped them to become familiar with the village. 
But that's not all. Yes. Eerie is also an important piece with significant thoughts and functions. Feeling empathy for Sotoko, he is the most influential piece on the board we call the Hinamizawa Syndrome. His existence is capable of defeating Rule X. Keiichi and Brenner's determination and awakening taught us that it was possible to fight against Rule X, but they didn't defeat it. Defeating Rule X requires the existence of Eerie, who has the strong will to discover a cure for the Hinamizawa Syndrome. I didn't know Eerie had this many thoughts within him. I always thought he was rather absent-minded, but he is in fact an important and powerful piece. Yeah, when well, he's not focusing on maids. If we gather all this power, can we win against Tokuno's will? <clears throat> I think we need more. I've seen Tokuno's thoughts too. They are strong and can't be broken easily. No matter how we fight, it's obvious the fate of June of the 58th year of Showa era won't be shaken easily. Because she has far more thoughts than what I have gathered. The weight of our game piece is a little different because I have given up on fighting while she has been risking her life to fight all. I'm sulking and getting drunk with wine to escape from reality. It must be a very light piece indeed. I can't win against Tokuna with what I have so far. I need more pieces to be able to win. Oishi from the police department once showed that there's a possibility of him becoming a strong ally. But he has been misunderstanding that the Sonozaki family caused the death of his dear friend. So until that gets resolved, he won't be my ally. I don't know how I can resolve that misunderstanding. But I just have to believe in it and keep throwing the die. Just like Keiichi and Rena constitute a chance to change the fate, maybe Akasaka has the power to create a chance too. Hmm. Akasaka could be a piece. The curse of the 58th year of the Showa era is the curse of Hinamizawa. A, a curse can't be beaten by a power from within. It needs a power from outside as well. Both sides have to reach out, otherwise the hands won't meet. Just like what happened with Sotoko. But Akasaka has never come to our help. Even if he did, it was always too late. Too late. Way too late. But if I keep throwing the die, would Akasaka's game piece show up as my ally? Hmm. The final rule, rule Y, is the evil masterminds who are using Tokuno as a game piece. To defeat them, I need a very strong game piece. That powerful game piece is none other than Akasaka from the police headquarters in Tokyo. There are more pieces who would lend their power. I need to gather them all, otherwise I can't win against Tokuno. The preparation of the game board is done, but I need more pieces. Everything is just starting. Indeed, so the game board is now set up. Alright. Sort of. Now I just need to attach the pieces. Okay. He's from the Onikakushi episode. The game board must be set up. Hmm. Alright. The game board is set up. So let's go... I'm gonna try to go in order here. Onikakushi first. In order for my Barakeiji to become a game piece that leads everyone, there's something he has to learn about. The piece that's very painful, pitiful, and sad. To learn about his friends, and not to doubt them. He doesn't know the importance of trusting his friends. He doesn't know yet. Mayabara Keiji develops paranoia from a slight mistrust and becomes trapped in Rule X. Keiji dies, leaving behind a sad note at the end of Rule X. It is very sad and painful, but it is also a very important piece of learning something very important. Hey, Honyu. You didn't have to apologize. In the few days he left Hinamizawa to attend his relative's funeral, he had an outbreak which was really tragic. But I think it was necessary as the first step towards learning something important. 
the very first step to smoke out Rule X and eventually to defeat it. When I only had this piece, I didn't even think of that, though. My god, Onikakushi's... Uh, that was a long time ago. Holy shit, I think that's actually whenever I first started doing visual novels on the channel. It all started with Higurashi, holy shit. Yeah, I, th I think... It, yeah, I think this was actually the first visual novel I... actually did on the channel. Oh my god. <laughs> Ugh, back when I didn't have that many voices I could use. Alright, we should probably head off to Watanagashi next. That's the second one. And then, um, Tatari Goroshi. The game piece reminds us that whatever happens on this game board, everything is due to the curse of the Son or the Sonozaki family pulling strings. No. But to put it in my words, this is the piece to make everyone aware of the existence of Rule Z. It is hard to notice with this piece, but this is a complicated piece that Sonozaki Shio, who is confined by Rule X, as she is mistakenly ridiculed by Rule Y, becomes aware of Rule Z. She owns his best girl. But this is also the piece that teaches us the rules of the game board. Fight me, Newt! By the way, the piece called Sonozaki Shion is a piece coming from the outside, from the game's point of view. She dislikes Hojo Satko at first, but through this and another piece, she learns something important, and challenges Rule X, and then grows up to be a powerful piece to fight Rule Z. This piece is very funny. But it's hidden so cutting, cunningly, and there's no way to see that fact with just a glance. Learn. Learn from your mistakes. And please become a powerful piece and lend me your strength to defeat the enemy. Oh, these are short. I could probably go ahead and take care of all of these. At least I think so. Possibly. Maybe. Okay. That's Watanagashi, so now we should go to Tatari Goroshi. Fuck you! This piece shows us the existence of the unreasonable Rule Z that surrounds Sotoko and reveals the most powerful adversary rule on the game board. Rule Y. Can all rules X, Y, and Z be seen now? The enemy we need to fight. The things we need to learn. The piece reveals the assembly of all of that. The existence of Rule Y isn't distinguishable at this point. At the very best, a fighting against Rule Z that's surrounding Sotoko is the limit. But with this piece, we make a mistake in our approach to fight it. The outcome we gained through erroneous ways is erroneous. Mayabara Keiichi learns that through his own experience. The power to defeat a tragedy isn't another tragedy. The power to defeat violence isn't violence. If they can learn that, all the pieces on this game board will learn the true way to fight. Right. But Takano is too powerful. The shocking end of this piece at the end doesn't allow us to learn it that easily. No. And Tatari Garoshi was fucking heartbreaking. God! I don't even want to think about that one. That one made me sad. Really sad. Alright, so after Tatari Garoshi, that's supposed to be... No, wait. Himitsubushi, Himitsubushi is supposed to be after Mayakashi, I think. Then it's Sumi Horoboshi. Wait a minute, where's... Oh, Minagaro... Wait. Uh... Oh. Wait, Minagaroshi is fourth one? Hmm. No, I'm pretty sure it's... I'm having a bit of a stroke here. I'm trying to... Um... Oh god, I forgot the order. Okay, so I was right. The next one is Himatsubushi. Okay. I uh, I was having such a goddamn brain aneurysm. Like, wait a minute. Of course. Okay, I remember the order now. I, I remember the order. 
This piece is the only one that's so distorted. That's because this is from before June of the 58th year of the Shilla era. Therefore, the existence of this piece has no effect whatsoever in the game we're playing on the game board. But is this really a useless piece? No, because it's got Akasaka. The identity of Rule Y has been completely exposed by now. With the power of a great organization, it is powerful enough to swallow up a small solidarity of individuals. It, uh, I almost gave up on this game but because of its irrational power. That's why I think maybe there's a piece hidden somewhere that's strong enough to fight against such a strong enemy. Akasaka Mamoru works in the police department headquarters in Tokyo and has the power to stand up against a big conspiracy. His power will withstand even against Rule Y, even though I changed his voice. Just like my Barakeji defeated Rule Z cleanly, will he be able to defeat Rule Y cleanly as well? We need everyone's strength. Akasaka's strength is needed as well. Yes, of course Akasaka is needed. He's a good boy. We require his power. Holy shit, that piece is barely even a minute. Yeah, I'm gonna be able to get all these pieces together. Alright, after Himatsubushi is Mayakashi. And then after that one is Sumi Horoboshi. And then Minagoroshi. And then finally, here. Alright, get to Shion, best girl. This is the piece Sonazaki Shion, who goes mad, taken in by Rule X. With no room for sympathy, this is such a painful piece that one can only have pity. It distinctly identifies the keyhole of the padlock called Rule Z. My Barakechi becomes a key himself to pry open this padlock. And as soon as Aki Mion wished for, he clears the stale air that filled the village. This piece is also an important lesson. Sonozaki Shion learns through this piece and then becomes a strong ally for Hojo Sotogo. By the way, maybe Hojo Sotogo is a piece that represents the padlock for Rule Z. Unless she is saved, Rule Z won't be defeated. When she is saved, that means Rule Z is defeated. This piece only indicates that. That's the only thing Sonozaki Shion learned by gambling her life. But now, I think that is very important. Every time I see Sotoko and Shion joke about pumpkins, I think that. Hmm. Also, it's got a little picture of good boy Satoshi. Oh, Hojo's didn't deserve what they got. Except for Tepai. Fuck that guy. Alright, next is Sumi Horoboshi. And then we take uh, tackle the last ones. Uh, Minagoroshi and Matsuri Bayashi. This game piece has a very important meaning for us. Because it has shown us that it was possible to poke a hole in the fate of the June of the 58th year of the Showa era for the first time. To start from the conclusion, everything gets taken in by Rule Y at the end and everything goes wasted. But, we challenge the great law that governs this game board, Rule X, head on. We use everything we have learned so far from other game pieces and prove we can defeat it. We grow by learning. In a game with no hope of winning, we can discover a slight chance of victory. This piece taught us that. With this game piece, Rule X was almost completely defeated. Oh yeah, Mayabara Keiji, you did a good job, boy. Mayabara Keiji and the others won't be led astray by something as pathetic as the Hinamizawa Syndrome and dance in a tragedy. It has also taught us that the rules aren't indestructible, but they are possible to defeat. In other words, it has given us, the ones who are on the outside of the game board, hope. An important game piece that is the cue for everything, as well as the game's turning point. Yes. <sighs> At least we're making progress. This is by far the most successful little run that I've done today. Actually, throughout this whole thing. Never mind. Alright. We're down to the last two. Alright. Hopping in to Minagoroshi.
The game piece that uncovers the invisible rule Y that has been pulling the strings from the beginning. Because the impression of that is so strong, it's easy to forget about something very important. We can't forget that this piece also shows the path to smash Rule Z. Rule Z is the foremost tragic of all Frude Rika's fate, and she has actually once given up. However, the Fumaibara Keiji and the others who have already learned everything, it isn't even an enemy. They knew the correct way to fight, and fought according to the rules of the game board. As a result, we win, and that fact is more valuable than anything for us. Then Mayabara at Keiji teaches me a lesson. <clears throat> there is no need to subject ourselves into any fate. The will to believe will defeat anything. The fate that always subjected me is created by Takano Mio's strong will to believe. So what he says is correct. To defeat the will to believe, we need a stronger will to believe. A strong intention can be pierced only with strong intention. We defeated rules X and Z, and then challenged the final rule. Rule Y. But we needed more pieces. Each piece fought at its best, but the strength of our enemies' pieces led by Takano Mio were just too powerful. She didn't even give us mercy. She squished us completely and made us restart the game all over again. Although we lost, we didn't give up our resolve in our hearts. Because we finally found the true culprit and also found the clue how to fight against her. We can't win with the pieces we have now. We don't have enough will to believe or strong enough intention. But Hanyu and I keep trying. We roll our die repeatedly, look for the greatest result, collect pieces, and try again. With a will stronger than Tokuno. Didn't you think of giving up several times before you got to this point? Yes, because my goddamn head hurt a lot. And also because I was crying. A lot. But you made it because you believed in me and followed me. We're almost there. We can do it. Let's create the last piece. Because that will be the greatest piece. We won't need anything else. The very last piece. Come on. Let's collect the pieces. Let's collect miracles. Please put your hopes, desires, and dreams on to me. Will do. This time there will be a happy ending, goddammit! I hope. Mm -hmm. Alright. The final piece. After collecting miracles from the seven pieces, I finally get hold of this piece. This piece holds our final fate. But before we take a peek, please wait just for a little bit. The fate that's inside will be decided the moment we take a peek. Have I told you about the story about the cat in the box? You mean Schrodinger's cat? Is the cat in the box alive or dead? If you open the box, you'll know. But you won't know until you open it. It could be alive, and it could be dead. In other words, before you open the box, the live cat and the dead cat coexist at the same time. And the moment you open the box and find out the truth, the incorrect answer disappears. The inside of this place is the same thing. The future we desire and the future Takano desires coexist at the same time. They are opposing each other and denying each other's future. Once we take a peek, one of the futures disappears. If we have enough pieces, we can take a look inside of this piece. But, we only have the same pieces lined up the same way on the game board. And the game under the same condition was Takano's complete victory. We've already tried in the piece of the Minagaroshi. We need more pieces. We need the help of a piece that's powerful and strong enough to defeat Rule Y. Until I get a hold of that piece, it's too scary to take a peek into that into this piece. But how do I get such a piece? It's a piece I've never gotten a hold of before. To get it, I need it. Just one more time. I need one more miracle to get that piece. Ooh!
Leftover pieces. Do you need the final miracle? Yes, I do. Hmm. What is this? I never noticed this tiny little piece. Sometimes a piece gets cracked and breaks. Which is like how the fate we believe cracks sometimes. A cracked fate is a completely different fate. Then which fate does this piece belong to? I pick up the tiny piece and try to match it with the pieces I have in my hand. And the last piece I picked up is... The piece of the Himatsubushi chapter. This piece is distorted from the beginning. And look. See? This tiny piece fits perfectly. With this tiny piece, how would the world change? What kind of miracle would occur? The whole world warps. I reattached the broken piece, so I guess a fault line was created. But that doesn't mean I can't take a peek inside. It is already after the 60th year of the Showa era. It is a time after Furude Rika and the other stories finished in dead end in the June of the 58th year of the Showa era. Oh. Okay. This is going to be rather a short... Sure. Beep za za! Okay. A... Hmm. A future piece. Huh. I kind of want to see what the piece is. Yeah, this is a little bit too short. I hear an order with some interference. Oh, I hear an order with some interference in my headset. To all units, the chief has a message for all of you. Listen up! Good work, everyone. The local police has given us 15 minutes to wrap this up, but I'm giving you a few seconds. Don't let a single person escape. The main target is a diplomat. Don't let him suspect you're a cop. Just grab him. But make sure you don't hurt him. If we do, it'll lead to diplomatic problems. They're dirtbags who hide under diplomatic immunity to deal with the local gangsters. They launder money from drug dealing and force people into the sex slave trade by means to pay off high interest debts. According to the local embassy, some of the victims are younger than teenagers. Let's kill him! Shitbags! Normally, this is a simple case with gangsters being involved. But when the police found out this case included a foreign diplomat, things got complicated all of a sudden. Diplomats have diplomatic immunity, so they can't arrest them. But the police know he's an important figure in this scheme, and there's no doubt that he's the middleman between the illegal activities conducted by the foreign criminal organization and the Japanese gangsters. They can't let him escape. Obviously. It'll be easy to deport him. But that doesn't solve anything. The police have asked the embassy where he works for assistance. But they denied the request. And the case was put on a standstill at that point. That's when they found out that the organization is going to be selling our self-defense forces classified radar and missile technology secrets. Oh. The public safety division set the move on the premise to protect the classified government information. And today's the day this operation is set to go. Two men at the front of the stairs. Two men at the underground entrance. Four men at the back door. And all suspects are believed to be armed. More than usual, huh? It'll only take two seconds more for that man. He shows no mercy. Can you hear Akasaka? You'll be the lead man. Be careful. Okay, let's move! This is Akasaka. Copy. Let's go. A man suddenly appears around the corner in downtown. It's Akasaka. But he doesn't have the naiveness that, the sh that he showed when he first met Rika. 
When he gets to the entrance of the underground club, a bouncer with a heavy foreign accent stops him. This place, members only. Or do you have a membership card? Akasaka pulls out a membership card. It's a card that's very difficult to forge, so they could only get one. Since he's the lead man, he got it. When the bouncer confirms the membership card, he lets him in. Akasaka-san past the bouncer at the entrance. He's going down the stairs. Come on, Akasaka. At the end of the staircase, there's an overly decorated door like the ones you see for those high-class clubs. The cocktail lights shine like venom, as if it's foretelling that this is the entrance to the evil cave. Welcome. May I see your membership card? The guard at the entrance takes the membership card and puts it through the card reader on the wall. Beep! An error sound. A slight perspiration is seen on Akasaka's forehead. The guard swipes the card a couple of times more. Beep. Beep. Akasaka-san is having a problem. They change the system. If Akasaka gets into trouble, we'll change the plan. We'll secure Akasaka's safety. Let's be honest, I'm kind of just enjoying the this theme that's playing. The other guard starts to look irritated. His right hand reaches inside of his jacket. He's probably reaching to his gun. Ding dong! The buzzer suddenly rings a delightful tone and the card reader flashes a green light. Immediately after that, the lock to the door unlocks. Ugh, thank you for waiting. Please go in. The guard pulls his hand out of his jacket and opens the heavy door. Loud music and flashing colorful lights spill out from the inside. A well-dressed guard comes from the inside and welcomes him. At this moment, Akasaka's first mission is accomplished. This is a go signal for all units. At the same time, it means Akasaka is in the enemy territory all by himself and he's in an extremely dangerous position. This door is the biggest obstacle to make the ambush. The door locks automatically, so when it closes, it's locked at the same time. It's a solid door and it is extremely difficult to open from the outside. Somebody has to open this door and keep it open for several seconds in order for this raid to begin. And Akasaka is the only one who can do that. That's Akasaka. Entrance secured. Go, go, go! The building on the other side of the club is getting a new tenant, and there are two trucks parked in front of it. Oh boy, we're actually getting a sting operation. Well, not, maybe not a sting operation. It's literally just a raid. That's, okay. Okay. Oh boy. But they are both disguises. The door of one of the trucks opens, and several dozen plainclothes investigators jump out. The same thing is happening at the back door, too. The ground level guards notice this and begin to draw their guns. They are taken down immediately by investigators nearby who were standing by as innocent bystanders. Genius! Several dozen investigators quietly go down the underground stairs. These narrow underground stairs are another obstacle in this operation. Everything is on the security camera. So within a few seconds, this ambush is going to be known. A push on the security button will make it impossible for the lock to be opened from the outside. That's why they must secure the door before the ambush. The guards on the both sides of Akasaka notice the loud footsteps coming down the stairs. The well-dressed guard also realizes something is wrong. The three guards shift their attention from Akasaka to the back stairs. Akasaka senses their shift of attention. Akasaka takes a small breath and stops his breath. The two guards standing beside him suddenly rise into the air in strange positions. Oh, Akasaka figured out his position alongside the two guards next to him, so he didn't need to check with his eyes. But still! <laughs> his fists drove into their face with precise accuracy. So freaking good. I'm sorry, I, I, hear, I hear the freaking music and I'm just like losing my mind at how fucking good it is. His moves are well trained and show no mercy against evil. They are as destructive as an armor piercing ammunition. He retracts his arms at the same speed as he struck. Everything looks so strange in the flashing lights. The man who saw this probably can't figure out what just happened. The two guards are up in the air in weird positions, and the man who was standing in front of him is now crouching low. The time that seemed to have stopped suddenly begins to move at crashing speed. The well-dressed guard is smashed to the ceiling and now crashing down onto the floor. Holy fuck, Akasaka! Jesus! He will try to remember desperately while slurping liquid food at a later date, 
whether it was his fist or leg that broke his jaw. He probably won't remember. Luckily, he rolls on the floor and blocks the door so Akasaka doesn't have to hold the door open anymore. This is Akasaka. I'm going in. Wait! Wait for the backup! Akasaka! The room is filled with loud music, but everyone already knows the brouhaha. <laughs> brouhaha! At the entrance. Everyone get down! As soon as Akasaka bellows his warning, screams fill the club. Most of the people immediately duck to the floor as if they are trying to proclaim their innocence from their sins. But all the guards react quickly against Akasaka. In the midst of this, there are a few people who are trying to make their escape through the back with several guards. Akasaka restarts his breathing once and then stops again. And he runs after them like a wolf! He jumps onto the table, smashing expensive bottles of alcohol and scattering glasses with ice cubes made from the icebergs of the Arctic. A foreign bodyguard, whose previous profession must have been a professional boxer, thoughtlessly stands in front of Akasaka. With a heavy accent, he tries to taunt Akasaka. But Akasaka doesn't care less about that. The only show this man was able to show was that he was able to block Akasaka's move. But it wasn't even a guard! The power of Akasaka's punch is so incredible, it'll just break the man's bones in his desperate attempt to block them. The man's arm warps in a strange way, and a moment after his face shows agony, Akasaka's left arm grinds into his face. Akasaka's right-handed, so this man should be grateful that he is able to get away with just an orbital fracture. Holy fuck, Akasaka's a goddamn badass! Another man tries to tackle Akasaka from behind, thinking this is his chance. He thought no matter how strong a guy is, he'll go down easily without being attacked from behind. He also thought because he's concentrating in front of him, he isn't expecting an attack from behind. But that's only if Akasaka is actually concentrating in front of him. He's very wrong if Akasaka isn't even thinking of the guy in front of him. Akasaka knows exactly when and what is about to happen. The experience he has built up to this day taught him that. His body remembers the timing and method when menaces to society like these would make their move from his back. His move continues fluidly from the left arm that he struck against the ex-boxer. His left arm retracts and at the same time he arcs his left leg around beautifully as it crashes into the man approaching him from behind. A dull sound tells. His nose is broken. It's it's kind of cathartic. I <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm actually extremely happy that we have we have we have the Akasaka from way back in Himatsubushi. Now we got badass Akasaka! But Akasaka already knows that! Akasaka continues his motion and directs a decisive right blow to the side of his head. The man slams into the wall and bounces back to roll on the floor. Akasaka takes another breath. Under the glare of the flashing club lights, the guards realize they are up against a demon. There's no way to interfere with him. The guards are being paid to fight with humans. Fighting against non-humans isn't on their job list. <laughs> Then finally, the backup arrives. Maybe a finally isn't a suitable word. Besides, everything happened in a matter of seconds. The time it took for Akasaka to take down those five guards was just a span of two breaths. Put your hands above your head and get down on the floor! I won't guarantee your life if you resist! Thanks to Akasaka's heroic move, the flow is already set. The impressive strike of Akasaka shatters the gang leader's will to run. They're all down on the floor, but one of them shows a smile. You shouldn't touch me. It'll evoke a diplomatic scandal. Akasaka grabs his collar and smashes him against the concrete wall. Hot damn! Uh, are you a policeman? Uh, I have diplomatic immunity. I I'm a diplomat. Good for you. So, how much you get paid, huh? This will be a diplomatic scandal. Let me call the embassy. <laughs> With a dragon-like roar, Akasaka's right fist pounds the wall right next to the diplomat's head. Ooh, boy! Immediately after that, his left fist pounds the wall on the other side of the diplomat's head. Akasaka pounds the wall seven times, just a sliver away from the diplomat's head. His fist is powerful enough to crush this man's head easily. The man crumbles down onto the floor. <laughs> this is Akasaka. 
Target secured. The later investigation finds out that there was a secret getaway route that the public safety didn't know about. They found dozens of Soviet military-grade machine guns, and if Akasaka hadn't stopped them in the club, they would have escaped, or even worse. This operation might have ended with a brutal death toll on both sides. All due to Akasaka's great work, this operation was put down without a single shot fired. DUDE! Come on, hurry! The local police will be here soon! Put them on the truck! Since the foreign diplomat is involved, we have to make sure it doesn't look like this whole thing was carried out by the police. This operation is made to look like a simple gangster war. Oh! They dump the useless gang members and hand over the target to the police. Of course, before handing him over, they'll make sure he spills out everything he knows. This diplomat pig will be used as a negotiation device by another part of our department. There's plenty of evidence that this pig is tied to an underground criminal organization. The embassy won't want a persona non grata on their hands. So they'll cut off any ties with them. The rest is the other department's business. The public safety's job is to take care of the things regular police can't step in. Nakasaka, you okay? Come in, Akasaka! This is Akasaka. We're on our way. You've done it again! The chief will be on your case! Akasaka-san is a demon! Five men within seconds! That's not karate anymore! His fists are deadly weapons! But it was his luck none of them drew their guns. Knowing how brutal Akasaka-san is, he could have turned them into honeycombs! Shut up! Don't make me sound like an assassin. I have no mercy against evil. That's all. The pigs he caught today are not just average criminals. They've committed so many unforgivable crimes. The power of Akasaka's fists is proportional to their sins. The heavier their sins, the more powerful his blows are. Dear God, he's a beast. Come on, round them up. Akasaka, make them hurry. The local police will be here. This is Akasaka. Roger. Did you guys hear? Hurry up! Roger! Ah, uh, come on. We have five injured. Please have meds ready. There's no trace of naiveness in Akasaka. He has grown to be a vigilante ace in his department. Holy shit! Damn! Good on you, Akasaka! Ah, oh, jeez. Alright, um, that is actually now where I'm going to end it. Holy shit! Akasaka's a beast now! That is awesome! Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! -hoo -hoo. Awesome. Damn. Ooh, I get to see more Akasaka! Alright, alright guys, that's where I'm going to end it. Uh, first off, I'm definitely looking forward to more Akasaka in the future. Thank God, finally we've got more of him! I missed him, okay? Don't judge me. On the other side, though, we managed to finally get all of the pieces put together. Finally! After that much of a goddamn headache that I was causing myself. It was entirely my fault that I messed all that up. Um, I was told that, uh, I'm not entirely sure if I'm supposed to do it now, but I think it's after I complete Matsuri Bayashi. It was recommended because there's actually a specific order that you have to get all the pieces in to get, like, a, a, a secret ending. Um, I'm not entirely sure where I could do that. But I will try to go over that if I'm if if possible. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I'm sorry that this video might have been a little bit shorter than usual, but uh, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll I'll see you guys in the next video. I guess we're finally gonna get into. Oh wait, this is still Himatsubishi. Never mind. All right, see you guys in the next video. Hello there everybody, Sabata Knight 2 here, and if you like this video, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And hey, if you guys like my content, then maybe you'd like to check out another channel who I think deserves equal attention. So click that nightmare emblem and check out that channel, or go to the links in the description down below. Once again, thank you, and I'll see you guys in the next video.